which is tangent of theta. So any questions on that one? All right. So last will be Pythagorean and cotan cofunction identities, which is really just a twist on something we already know. Oh, is anyone still writing? Okay. So Pythagorean and cofunction identities. So this all revolves around the one formula, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. Okay, so we have this. So what if we divide everything by sine squared theta. Okay, so that would give us sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. So we divide this by sine squared theta. Divide this by sine squared theta. And divide this one by sine squared theta. Okay. Anything divided by itself is 1, so that just disappears. So we have 1 plus cosine over sine is cotangent. So we have cotangent squared theta equals 1 over sine is cosecant. So you have cosecant squared theta. Now, what if instead of dividing everything by sine squared, we divide everything by cosine squared? So divide by cosine squared of theta. Okay, so we do the exact same thing. So we have sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. This time, we divide everything by cosine squared. Okay. Again, anything divided by itself is just going to be 1. So sine over cosine is tangent, so that leaves us with tangent squared plus 1 equals 1 over cosine secant, so that leaves us with secant squared. Okay. Which are the three cofunction and identities you, you're going to want to use here? All right, so any questions so far? Yes? So Oh, no, this is just showing how you get to each formula. So we're going to use that to actually solve the next answers. All right. So let's say, for example, now do this one. Okay, so let's say we're given that cosecant, uh oh, clean that up a little bit, of theta is equal to negative square root of 5 
in quadrant four. What is tangent of theta? Now with this one, you want to remember that cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over tangent of theta. And you can also switch those up to where tangent of theta is equal to 1 over cotangent of theta. So multiply both sides by tangent, divide by cotangent. Same thing would be true. Okay. And also, remember that 1 plus cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared of theta. It is one of the co-functions we just solved for. Okay. So we know that cosecant, let me move that over a little bit. Cosecant of theta is equal to negative square root of 5. We can just square it and put it in there. So you have 1 plus cotangent squared of theta is equal to cosecant squared. Because remember, this is just cosecant squared of theta is just cosecant of theta squared. So you can rewrite it that way. So since we know that cosecant is equal to negative 0.5, I mean negative square root of 5, sorry about that, that's just negative square root of 5 squared. We kind of separate that a little bit. Okay. So that make sense? All right. Okay, so we just substituted that. So now we can solve for cotangent. Okay, so this gives us 1 plus cotangent squared theta equals positive 5. So if we subtract 1 from both sides, cotangent squared of theta is equal to 4. So if we square root both sides, you know, cotangent of theta, since the square and the square root cancel each other out, cotangent of theta is equal to positive or negative 2. Okay. So we know it's in quadrant 4. So tangent of theta is negative and quadrant four. So here we're gonna use the negative. So if tangent is negative, then of course cotangent is negative. So cotangent of theta equals negative two. Okay, so that means tangent of theta, which is one over cotangent of theta is equal to 1 over negative 2, or just negative 1 half. So it's kind of just a manipulation of the formulas. All right, so any questions on that one? All right, so let's do one more, and then we'll call it a day. that up for a few seconds. And a lot of, and really to be honest, it's easier to just solve for these instead of trying to memorize them. Because if you have sine squared plus cosine, cosine squared equals one, if you just divide them all by sine and divide them all by cosine, it takes you a couple of seconds than it would to try and 
drill it into your memory. So, but if you have a really good memory, you could do that also. I just try to pass on bad memory knowledge to those who might share my bad memory. All right, so let's say, for example, if you're given that secant of theta is equal to square root of 13 over 3, and your theta is in quadrant 1. What if we want to find tangent of theta there? Okay. So with that one, we really don't want to use the cotangent. Since we're given secant, it's easier because this way, if we remember, Tangent squared theta plus 1 equals secant squared of theta. Okay. So if we know secant is equal to square root of 13 over 3, remember that secant squared of theta is the same as secant of theta squared. Okay. So we know that tangent squared of theta plus 1 is equal to secant, we just replace that there, square root of 13 over 3 squared. Okay, so we have tangent squared of theta plus 1 equals 13 over 9. Now yeah, we can go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides. So that disappears. So tangent squared of theta equals 13 over 9 minus 1. And we can go ahead and simplify that on the side. 13 over 9 minus 1. 13 over 9 minus 9 over 9, which is 4 ninths. Okay. So this just gives us tangent squared theta equals 4 ninths. Okay. So if we square root both sides, the square and the square root cancels out. So we have tangent of theta equals plus or minus square root of 4 is 2, 2 thirds. Okay. So we know since it's in quadrant 1, everything's positive in quadrant 1. Everything is positive in quadrant 1. So that means your tangent of theta is positive two-thirds. All right, so any questions on that one? All right, so I think I'll...